Wouldn't it be great if you could combine several machine learning algorithms together? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how to do that in what is called stacking model, where we literally stack several machine learning algorithms to create a meta classifier. And so we're going to do that in scikit-learn. And without further ado, we're starting right now. Okay, so the first thing that you want to do is to head over to the Jupyter Notebook. And so I'm providing this in the video description. And so you could also load this up in the Google Colab as well. And so in order to start, we're going to connect the notebook. And the data set that we're going to be using today is the Iris data set provided by the scikit-learn package. And so here we're going to load it up to the X and Y variables. So you could feel free to load up your own data set and follow along. But I'm going to use the Iris data set because the size of the data is not too big. And so the computational time required will not be too much. So in this step, if your data is quite big, it might be able to remove any redundant features from your X variables. But for our case, none was removed. And then we're going to be performing some data splitting. And we're going to be using the split ratio of 80-20, whereby 80% 80 will be for the training set and the 20% will be for the test set. And so here we're using the stratify option to be yes, which means that the ratio between the positive and negative classes will be maintained. Let's perform the data split. And now let's have a look at the shape of the X and Y variables. So we could see that after performing the 80-20 data split, we have 120 rows and four columns for the training set. And for the testing set, we have 30 rows and four columns. And so the rows corresponds to the data samples. In our case, the iris flowers and four is the X variables. They are the features that will be used for making the prediction. And then we're going to be importing the metrics, including the accuracy score, Matthew's correlation coefficient, F1 score. And so for classification models, my favorite performance metric is the Matthew's correlation coefficient. And actually based on a recent tweet by Danny Ma, he mentioned about the use of the accuracy metric for evaluating classification models. And he provided some pointers on how you could evaluate the performance of classification models, whereby the accuracy score is not the recommended route. And so I'll provide the link to that tweet where I also recommended the use of the Matthews correlation coefficient as well, which is my favorite. And so let's run the code cell. All right, and so here we're going to be building several machine learning models, and then we're going to be combining them together. And so let's have a brief look at the machine learning models that we're going to be combining together via stacking. And so before going into more detail about the baseline machine learning models that we're going to be building today, let me hop for one moment to have a look at the illustration here. So in this website from IBM, it provides a very good introduction to model stacking. And this illustration does a very good job of illustrating how we can combine several machine learning algorithms into a meta learner by using a baseline classifier. And so essentially, each of the algorithms here will be making its own prediction. And then the prediction probability will be used as input for the meta learner in order to combine the collective prediction performance of all of the algorithms employed. Let's say that in our example today, we're going to be using about five machine learning algorithms. And so the prediction probability of each of the five will be combined together. And we're going to be using the logistic regression to combine those probabilities probability score. And finally, those probability score will be used as input in order to allow the logistic regression to make the final prediction. And so we're expecting that the stacking models is a function of the algorithms used in the model stack. And in most cases, we observe that the stacked models provided pretty good performance. So in a worst case scenario, the stack model will provide a performance similar to that of the original algorithm or even better. So that really depends on the data as well. So let's hop on back to the code. 
And so here we're going to be building the k-nearest neighbor model. So the first line is to import the k-nearest neighbor classifier. And then we're going to be defining the classifier by assigning it to the k and n variable by using the k-neighbors classifier function. And then we're going to be training the model using k and n dot fit. And then as input argument, we're going to be using the training set x train and also y train. And so x corresponds to the features that describes the flower and Y corresponds to the classification label or the class label of the flower, whether it belongs to one of three flower types, which includes the Iris Citosa, Iris Versicolor, Iris Virginica. And then after making the model, we will be applying it to make a prediction on the X train or the training set and also on the testing set. And the resulting will be assigned to the Y train pred variable and also the Y test pred variable. So these are the predicted value of the training set and the predicted value of the testing set. And then finally, we're going to be making use of these predicted value of the training and also the testing set together with the original y values from the y train and also the y test to calculate the performance metric of the model. So we're going to be calculating how well the model is performing. And so as mentioned earlier, we're going to be making use of the accuracy metric, the Matthews correlation coefficient, and also the F1 score. And so here we're using the accuracy score function. And as input argument, we're going to be using y train and also y train pred. And so y train is the the actual value, y train prep is the predicted value. And so this will be the same for the Matthews correlation coefficient and also the F1 score. And so the resulting value will be assigned to the variables called KNN train accuracy. So notice here that the naming convention that I use here is I first start by including the name of the machine learning algorithm, followed by the name of whether it is belonging to the training set or the testing set. And then finally, whether it is a accuracy, MCC or F1 score. And likewise, I also have for the test set as well. So we have the can and test accuracy, can and test MCC, and also can and test F1 score. And then finally, we're printing it out all of the six metric here in the following block of code here. So let's run it. So here we see that the training set model performance is printed out on top here and the model performance for the test set is printed out below here. And so we can see that the test set for this one performs better than the training sets. Let's have a look at the support vector machine. So it's going to be following the same logic as mentioned above. And notice that the naming convention is also maintained as also above. So here we have the SVM RBF and SVM is the acronym for support vector machine and RBF is for the radio basis function, the kernel that we're employing in this algorithm. And so the training set has better performance than the testing sets, which is in converse to the KNN. And now let's run the decision tree. And again, here we change the name to DT for decision tree. And so the training set provided better performance than the test sets. And let's run the random forest. And also here, we use the acronym RF for the random forest and same naming convention followed by the name of whether it is for the training set or the testing set and followed by whether it is the accuracy, MCC or F1 score. And same here, the training set performed better than the test sets. And let's do it for the neural network. And so neural network, we use MLP for multi-layer perceptron in the naming convention. And so test set provided better than the training set here. All right, and so as you can see here that all of the model that we have built, we have saved it into the acronym of the model. Like the neural network will be saved as MLP. The SVM will be saved here. Uh, the random forest will be saved here as RF. Decision tree will be D DT. Support vector machine will be SVM RBF. KNN will be KNN. Okay. And let's have a look at the code for the stack model. So here we're going to be importing the necessary libraries. So we're using the stacking classifier and the final estimator here that we're using is the logistic regression. 
And so we have the list of the machine learning algorithms that we're going to be using as the base model. And so this includes the KNN, as mentioned earlier, SVM, DT, Decision Tree, Random Forest, and also the neural network. And then the estimator variable here will be assigned here, estimator and estimator. Okay, so you could also call this something else. Maybe we call it estimator list, and then we put it here, save it, and then let's run it. So this should take some time. All right, but not too bad because the data set is not too big. So it took about two seconds to run. And so the final estimator is assigned to be logistic regression, and the stacking model is made possible by using the stacking classifier. So this is used when the model is a classification model, but if you have a regression model, you would be using the stacking regression, or I think it's called the stacking regressor. Okay, so the model will be assigned to the variable called stack model. And then same as how we would train other model, we would be using the fit function. And then we're going to make the prediction and assign it to the Y train pred and also the Y test pred. And then we're also going to compute the model performance as also done earlier and print it out. So here we see that the training set provided roughly similar performance to the test set. And then we're going to be combining all of the performance of all of the five different machine learning algorithm together with the stack model as well. So we're going to have a separate list of the combined value for the accuracy, for the MCC, and also for the F1 score. Okay, so here we have for the MCC train list. Okay, so let me call this MCCDF, and then we're going to be doing it for the ACC as well. So let's do ACC, F1, ACC, F1, F1. Okay. Accuracy. And then we're going to combine it together, pd.carcat, mcc, df, mcc, df, f1, df, axis equals to 1. Let's see. Okay, there you go. So we combined all accuracy into one table along with the MCC and also the F1 score. And now let's save it out. And then we can see that we have the generated results file. And here we have it. And so feel free to modify the data to another data set. And then you could rerun this and see how the stacking model performs in relation to the other machine learning algorithms. And so here you see that generally the stack model performed pretty good on all of the various metric that you can see here, the accuracy, MCC, and also the F1 score. And so I'd love to hear from you how you're planning to use the stacking model in your own data science project. So I hope that this video was helpful to you and please support the channel by smashing the like button, subscribing if you haven't already, and also make sure to hit on the notification bell so that you will be notified of the next video. And as always, the best way to learn data science is to do data science and please enjoy the journey.